Getting to Facebook Bug Bounty Leaderboard is a great achievement. Being the top one is insane. But today I'm interviewing a hunter who has been top one for three consecutive years there and has found multiple account takeovers on Facebook. He's one of the million dollar hackers and his name is Yusuf Samuda. Enjoy the interview. Hello Yusuf, thank you so much for, for joining me today. First, for those of you who somehow don't know you, uh, could you tell us a few words about yourself? Uh, hello, great. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, so my name is Yusuf Samuda. I'm 24 years old and uh, I'm from Tunisia. Uh, I started uh, hacking uh, when I was 13 or 14 years old and uh, it's been a hell of a journey. So uh, 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 now I do uh, mainly bad bounty hunting and penetration testing for some firms uh, and that's it, yeah. How did it start? What did you hack when you were 14 years old? So when I was uh, 14 years old, uh, it was uh, like, I'm not sure. I started learning first, like uh, about a uh, few gay melodies in, uh, in with, with vulnerabilities. Uh, at that time, it was uh, PHP was the main uh, like programming language uh, used for uh, web development, and I started by learning PHP. After that, I uh, I kind of teach myself a uh, few things. Like I noticed it when uh, I was developing uh, pro web applications. For example, uh, I sometimes I noticed that I can uh, bypass or gain the permissions to a few things that uh, I shouldn't have permission uh, to access. And uh, yeah, from that point on, I started to access forums, like having forums and uh, uh, shared to the, like it was RTC chat rooms, I guess, RTC or something like that. After that, uh, yeah. So, uh, when I was 16 or 17, I started doing bug mounting three years or four years after learning about uh, web banks and web journalists. What bug bounty programs did you start with? Yeah. So I started with uh, the Facebook bug bounty program. Uh, yeah, and uh, I okay. So, working. so we'll skip to Facebook. We'll skip to Facebook in a second because there's a lot we can talk about Facebook. But before before we go there, um, so I believe you 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 have to call yourself self-taught. Uh, but as from what I know, you did go to university. Yeah. So uh, when I went to university, uh, I went to. Canada studying in Canada for uh, to have a computer uh, science degree. Uh, uh, I studied for three months or four months and uh, I stopped. I found out that uh, I knew everything uh, I was learning in the university. So uh, I stopped. And uh, at that time, uh, it happened that uh, Hacker One had uh, had a live hunting event and I went there and uh, I made like $100,000 in one day. So that uh, like changed my Whoa. point of view about learning and university. Yeah, so I stopped and uh, I focused mainly on uh, the continent. So you made 100,000 of bounties in one day. Before this day, approximately, uh, more or less, how much did you make in all the previous years? So uh, at that point, I was working uh, very well with Facebook, so yeah. uh, and that's why I got invited to uh, this Hacker One event. So I guess I made before that hundred than fifty or two hundred uh, for a period of uh, like two years. Yeah. Okay, so it was really, let's say maybe not life changing, but a lot of money compared for in two years, you made 150 or 200 K and then all of a sudden you get 100 K in one day. 
I'm not at all surprised he decided to to drop out of university. Um, did you then uh, start hacking full time, or did you still have another job? Yeah. So after that so event on uh, not finishing the university, I started uh, mainly doing bug bounty hunting. I did some uh, training testing jobs. It was for uh, like one month or two months, but mainly yeah. it was bug bounty hunting, and mainly with uh, Facebook program. Okay, so why did you choose Facebook? Uh, so uh, at that time, uh, uh, starting from 2017 uh, up to, uh, I guess, last year, it was, uh, to my uh, point of view, uh, from my point of view, it was the best program because uh, it was, I was getting paid more than uh, the other programs. Uh, I get paid, for example, uh, uh, average uh, of $40,000 per month, and I was getting paid like uh, in three weeks from reporting the bag. So that was the, the best, uh, like uh, the ideal uh, environment for me. I tried other programs. Uh, sometimes I would get uh, paid uh, well, but after three or four months, and sometimes I get paid uh, instantly, but uh, the bounty would be less than uh, expected. Yeah, yeah. I saw a lot of your blog posts, and it's it's absolutely amazing how consistently can you get those payouts around the fifty thousand mark. Um, when you decide you want to hack, how do you choose your target? Yeah. So uh, first of all, the target should be in Facebook. Uh, the Facebook ecosystem or the Facebook company now names Meta. So I chose, uh, for example, I have few skills that I made before that would look at uh, for inside JavaScript files in each website. For example, Facebook business, Facebook uh, main website, Facebook uh, store, for example, and Instagram, Oculus, all of them. And uh, it would, for example, each day, Try to find changes in these JavaScript files, and uh, if uh, this script finds out that uh, the critical change or a uh, few lines or uh, new JavaScript files were created that may contain uh, something special, it depends on the filter and the classifier for the script. It would uh, give me a notification on that try uh, and start to manually uh, test it. That's, that's what I actually thought about doing something like this again, uh, a long time ago, and I've never, never finally did it. Is this script complex? Cause, uh, I guess JavaScript files change very often. And a lot of times it's not, uh, a change that's interesting to us. Yeah. It's uh, like, uh, of course the change, uh, should be more than one editors, for example. It, uh, it obvious maybe they, uh, just change the variable, uh, variable name. So it has to be, for example, a new line or two lines. And with Facebook, they, uh, they develop, uh, using React. Uh, so it's like modules. I can, for example, extract the uh, modules name and, uh, I try to detect new modules added. And, uh, after that, from the module name, I can, for example, get a hint what this might be. For example, they have, if the module is for, uh, communication, client side communication with the backend for Ajax, for example, or Hedgehog, they have a certain reward in the module name. So, uh, for example, I'd focus on that. Sometimes I will, uh, ignore other things like, uh, CSS, uh, like, uh, things related to graphics on. So it's, uh, I guess it's uh, more specific to uh, the target. You can do it, uh, you can find hints in other targets and uh, build your skill to using it, using that information. So when you see a change in, in JavaScript, 
what tools do you use to deobfuscate the JavaScript to understand the JavaScript if you use any tools apart from the browser? Uh, actually, uh, I don't use like uh, there are many uh, by, uh, based uh, tools like the uh, JS Beautifier or JS Beautify, I guess. So this one would uh, just uh, try to uh, like add tabs, add uh, spaces, and uh, make it readable. But the actual obfuscation, with time, I uh, I just uh, got used to reading uh, the script very fast. So uh, if you get used to reading variables named as A, B, C, D, instead of their real names, it starts to become very easy. And do you often use the browser debugger to understand the code or, or you just don't need it? I use it like uh, mainly for uh, when uh, I, I try to track something in the JavaScript uh, execution. So I try to make brief point and after that find the next function and uh, after that until I, uh, I reach one point where uh, for example, I'm looking for a save or I'm looking for a source or an XSS or another. So uh, I use it. Uh, actually, I only use uh, three tool, uh, two tools. I use the browser and the verb suite. Uh, verb suite. So verb suite, I guess. Yeah. So I only use uh, those two. And uh, yeah. Do you use an extension in verb? Extensions in verb? Actually, no, uh, I don't like, uh, uh, I use, I use, for example, uh, a tool called meeting proxy. So it's similar to Burp, but you have more freedom to write scripts and everything. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, it doesn't have a graphical uh, interface, a GUI. So I have it in the middle, this proxy, meeting proxy in the middle, and it would forward the request to peer. So I can see the history and everything and uh, in the middle in medium proxy i'll program uh, scripts with uh, python that uh, would do some similar thing uh, to burp just i have more freedom uh, like uh, it can be for example i'm not sure if this is the possible in burp and uh, the script would be uh, uh, like instantly monitoring uh, any requests extract like uh, in the background doing all this stuff. So uh, in the and the, in the same type like extracting uh, extracting secrets from from the requests. I don't understand. Oh, what's that? Uh, uh, like the the Python script. What? what this Python script would be extracting from those requests or responses. Yeah. So for example, uh, if I'm looking for, uh, uh, if I have a specific for example, uh, like a Burp suite extension that would, for example, for, uh, B64 encoded strings and try to decode them and try to find out why it was coded or what's inside. So we have this cube like that, doing it in the JavaScript instantly, and it would be saving anything, uh, for example, uh, in the folder. I'd have another script looking for, uh, I'm not sure, like, uh, if I have, uh, I'd have, uh, like, uh, scripts that are in the middle, like between the browser, when I browse, uh, they work. And then have other scripts that uh, do their jobs uh, in the background. Like they try to scrape a website and look for a certain, like inject, for example, XSS payloads and uh, see the related response in the response. A few things like this. But it would get, like, for example, okay. the okay. endpoint, the website, everything from uh, uh, the browser or uh, from the browsing history. Okay. Okay. I understand. And do you have a favorite vulnerability class? 
Yeah. Uh, I, it's not actually for a bit, but, uh, an impact. I love the uh, account they covers. So, uh, I actually like, uh, more than server side bets, uh, because, uh, yeah, I enjoy, uh, reviewing codes and, uh, for uh, an application like Facebook, the only code available would be the client side code, the JavaScript code. So I enjoy, uh, like, uh, testing these codes. I enjoy, uh, testing the browsers where this code is getting executed. And, uh, usually I'll find back in the browser or bags in the, in the files themselves. Yeah. So, uh, I'll get, uh, that category, uh, like browser based, uh, bags or XSS, DOM XSS, uh, more specifically. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I could de definitely foresee this based on, on the write apps on your blog, uh, with a few of them covered already, um, on my channel and what do you think you do differently from other hunters that you have extraordinary results and other hackers don't? Yeah. Uh, so we said about what, uh, so if you have the perfect, uh, uh, like strategy, uh, you can get, uh, the files that uh, you need to manually, uh, have manually, uh, like test or manually, uh, review. So at that point, you have that will, will be at the same level. Uh, after that, it depends on the knowledge of JavaScript, uh, knowledge of uh, the browsers, uh, security policies, uh, everything. So uh, relations between a uh, few features. So it's mainly knowledge of uh, the JavaScript, how JavaScript works and how browser works. So you can detect if something wrong, you will easily detect it. And, uh, one more thing, like, uh, for me, I try to, uh, if I found something, uh, like, uh, weakness, but it's not very critical, it can be used and try to save it. So for later, for example, it doesn't have any impact, but I try to save it there. And if I find, for example, your nerve. Uh, another weakness that can be linked with that one, I'd come back and uh, chain them together. So that's, uh, that's a good thing you can do, especially in browsers, uh, in a uh, nice side code, because you can have like relations between uh, two windows. You can have iframe, you have relation, parent relation. So you can do a lot of things. What do you use to, to keep those notes? Uh, like, uh, Gedi, I guess, uh, like any, uh, text editor in Linux or Windows, it's not very, uh, okay. Okay. Just s simple solution. Yes. Okay. And, um, also by looking at your, uh, on your, on your blog, there are a lot of those accesses or account takeovers that have awards of, uh, usually at least 40 K I think, mm -hmm. uh, are there many bugs with lower severity and lower bounties that you just don't write about? Uh, what's the question? Uh, like why I only focus on uh, big bounties or big ambed bets? Is that? The question is, do you find low impact bugs and not write them on your blog or do you not find low impact bugs? Well, so uh, in the first three or four years, I, uh, used to report, uh, like medium impact or not very low, but medium, like the bounty would be around four to five K and uh, I stopped after that, uh, because, uh, like, uh, most of the time, these issues, uh, take a long time to fix. So I'd wait for three months, uh, to get some, for example, five or four K. And uh, personally, I, uh, I like to enjoy my work. So, uh, when I get paid, I can get motivated to uh, work more. So I'll just be waiting for that bounty to come so I can test again. So, uh, I stopped doing it, uh, low or medium, uh, severity bags and I only hooks or 
on really big ones. Okay, okay, that's very, very interesting. Uh, like for for a lot of people, a, a payout of of uh, four, five, six k is is a lot, and I guess for oh. for you it works better to wait for the big win. Um, this will be super hard question to answer, but how long do you stay on one functionality until you move on? Okay, so uh, if uh, for the scripts and scripts I have, I get like a, a big red uh, notification that this is interesting, and uh, I just spend like three to four days examining everything, uh, trying to attack it from different angles with different tools, uh, not tools, like with different attacks. And, uh, yeah, after four days, uh, I just move on. I'll, as I said, I'll try to save, uh, the, the little weaknesses that, that I can't currently exploit, but I save them uh, for me. Okay. Okay. And how more or less how often can you find uh, a bug um i guess it... i'll try it because i'm not very productive i guess um, i like to like uh i have a balance of very i i won't say it's a balance uh like 50 uh, 50 percent work 50 percent uh personal life i'll have like uh, 80 percent personal life and 20 percent work so I don't uh, do a lot of work. So uh, it would be, for example, uh, I'll hunt for two weeks. I have a confirmation that uh, I reported a valid ATO or a valid uh, critical bag. And I'll just, uh, uh, I'll be testing again after two months, for example. Yeah, so it's, for example. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it's, the... uh, and so, uh, yeah, and sometimes I'll have like a crazy, for example, month where I'm bored and I like to work very hard. So I'll be reports uh, four or five ATOs in one month. Uh, it happened last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. All of them valid ATOs on Facebook in one month. Yeah. I guess it was wow. four or four, four, I guess. That's, that's crazy. And how does the preparation for the live hacking event look like? So live hacking events, uh, uh, I'm not like uh, very focused uh, on, I wasn't very focused in, uh, on hacker one. Like, uh, now I plan to uh, engage more with hacker one or, uh, on that crowd. But, uh, when I was, uh, invited and just uh and be familiar like uh, about the target it all be familiar like facebook so i try to use the same techniques and uh for example in the last time event uh, it worked but the problem with uh, reporting to another uh, company or target that doesn't know you or your role it's hard to uh play uh, the impact of the bank. Example, uh, uh, I'll give an example. If I report the, the complex ATOs that I usually report to Facebook, and, uh, if I report the same back to, for example, I'm not sure, Zoom, for example, they won't have like the same, uh, uh response as Facebook. They'll be, uh, like slow. This is a blind side bag. Uh, we want uh, our user base won't be uh, very effective, for example. It didn't happen with the Zoom, but uh, I just named one target. So Facebook cares about uh, its client base. Uh, the others, uh, like, uh, uh, it's not that uh, much. And that's why, for example, some uh, some would pay $500 for XSS that would lead to a account type of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, I, I completely, completely understand. Um, also regarding your hacking style, uh, it seems like you are much more based on 
understanding the what happens, the, understanding flow and the JavaScript. Do you often brute force or fast anything? Yeah, so if it's uh, uh, one thing about finding, like uh, you can find the uh, bag JavaScript or a shell effect, but the exploit to write to uh, to achieve an attack, sometimes it requires uh, brute force, for example. But I use a brute force with other uh, sometimes, for example, I use it to uh, exfiltrate data from the server. Uh, for example, if I'm looking, uh, I'm still in like client side, looking for client side bugs, but sometimes you need to access JavaScript files that are not available to you. For example, you, uh, I need to get JavaScript files in a admin dashboard, but I don't have access to the admin dashboard. Okay. So I try to, uh, for example, find the CDN that serves JavaScript files and try to brute force a few things and that would uh, make me download the JavaScript files of the admin dashboard. From there, I can, for example, uh, prepare uh, an XSS attack, even though I don't have access to the, the dashboard to test it. I will, for example, find a DOM XSS in the JavaScript file and I know it's loading uh, when uh, slash admin is accessed, so I can uh, have and at that. Also, for example, I try to ex uh, to extract in points from these JavaScript files and uh, prepare for server side uh, attempts like IDOs or anything. Okay. Well, th these are crazy, crazy sounding attacks. Um, and also probably there is someone who listens to this podcast who thinks I am also monitoring JavaScript files for changes. Changes. I am also focusing on client side bugs. I like account takeovers, but I don't have as good results as Yusuf does. What is your advice to this person? What likely they are doing uh, wrong that that they just don't have as as great results as you do? Uh, so I will. Uh advice to uh, read more read more about javascript like uh, web docs about javascript uh, spec spec about javascript uh, especially features in the in the browsers read more about uh, browsers uh, features and security policies and everything like when you read that know everything why this header is uh, present in the request why this header is uh, at present in the response, when it's missing, you notice that and you can uh, like notice uh, this weakness and you can link it with other weakness to achieve, uh, to have a full working uh, attack or bug. So I think uh, uh, in the last, uh, last three years, uh, browsers added a lot of security features. So sometimes uh, people would uh, read the blog, how to, explo uh, how to uh, for example, exploit uh, a CSRF attack. They find vulnerable CSRF in point and everything, and they wonder why it's not working. Sometimes we'll have like security uh, policies or security features added, uh, and the browser would uh, protect and get a CSRF even if it's present. So they'll just try and waste time and if they know the new about, for example, uh, an attribute in a cookie or a header, they'll immediately know that the attack won't work. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, that's uh, the problem, lack of knowledge on the specifics in JavaScript and uh, browsers in general. Okay. And when you want to learn something new, let's, let's assume you know nothing about OAuth, about the protocol itself, and you want to learn it. How would you do this? Would you set up your own servers to, to understand the flows how, or, or you just hack? No, I try to uh, understand, of course, uh, 
the brace call how the protocol works. So uh, first we, first thing we do to have like test environment set up. After that set up, I try to uh, each time have a, a configuration. Another configuration than the previous one. For example, for OAuth, I try to have four or five types of OAuth communications uh, type, for example, or exchange type, and I try to test them all. all. After that, in the meanwhile, I, I need to read uh, the spec of OAuth. So I try to read the spec of OAuth, what's recommended uh, by uh, the spec writers, uh, what's recommended, what's enforced uh, by the spec writers. And uh, yeah, uh, after that, I'd prepare. For example, uh, I'd compare Facebook OAuth and see if they apply in the same spe uh, specs uh, mentioned in the specs. So if they do it, they do it uh, in the right way. And uh, I won't find the back if they do it the uh, wrong way. I, like I know uh, that I can exploit that. Also, I try to, uh, for example, uh, sometimes the spec has uh, has a fault or has a, is wrong. So sometimes the, the spec has a weakness. So I try to uh, exploit that and report it, for example, to to be company like Facebook, I'd get paid even though uh, Facebook is not uh, falsy here because it followed uh, the spec, but uh, I tried to get a bounty out of it. And after that, I report to uh, the, for example, the spec writers or to the bros. And when you have a uh specification in front of you, which usually is a huge document, what do you pay special attention to? Uh, inputs, of course, like user or uh, and the inputs that can be controlled by me or, uh, for example, uh, the redirect URI in, uh, in OOS. I can check, for example, the checks made to that redirect URI to verify it's a valid one. Uh, yeah, so I focus on that uh, and focus, for example, the response type. Uh, if it's possible to have uh, in a certain exchange uh, type in all to have both token and uh, code. And if that's possible, uh, can I leak the code or token to, to for example, answer or uh, open the redirects? So I focus on things that I can control, I can change. In an attack, few other things like are constant or won't have won't have an impact. I won't uh, read them. Okay, do you use any any websites with labs like I don't know Pentester Lab or Hack the Box or maybe do you play any CTFs? Uh, actually, no. But uh, if, uh, for example, uh, I read the local. Uh, white uh, papers. I read a lot of uh, write-ups and uh, especially uh, like the new research. And after I do that, the research, I try to do uh, like a home lab where uh, I think I can test how to explore this band. I have like different, oh. different levels of difficulties, different uh, cases and try to explain that money. Oh, wow. I, I believe those labs are, are golden somewhere, somewhere on your computer. <laughs> you can do labs too, like, uh, um, I guess uh, two wines are better than one. So if the lab, uh, the one week of the lab thought about uh, a trick that you do think of, it's better uh, also to do labs. I encourage people to do labs, but for me, it's about time. Like, uh, about, uh, I don't have much time to do that. Okay. What programming language do you use to, to create those labs? 
So uh, I'm old school, so I use PHP, but from now on, I try to, because I have maximum control of the web application, but uh, now at, uh, I do both the uh, JavaScript uh, in the back here, and sometimes when I, I'm testing the inside, but I do it in the front end, so it became more uh, easier to program. Yeah. Okay. You you now you are not uh, a full time backbound fighter. You also work uh, employed. Is this correct? Uh, I, I'm self employed, so I have a company. So I don't uh, from now on uh, yeah. let's say I don't operate as a person, but as a company. So I do my back bounty hunting uh, as a company. I do penetration testing jobs as a company. So it's uh, similar to a full time back bounty hunter, but I operate as a company. Okay, so we also do pen tests, sort of like a freelancer. Oh, well, because uh, for example, I can have a contract with the company. And, uh, I do it myself. I have a uh, few people that I know that would uh, help me sometimes. So I outsource some things. Uh, I have employees, so I can also ask them to do what, to work on them. Okay, okay, I understand. And how is your hacking style different when you do pen tests versus when you do back bounty? So with, with pen tests, the, the big uh, uh, like privilege is uh, sometimes I have the source code. I have the source code that it would be, for example, white, uh, white box testing or gray box testing. Uh, that's perfect for me because I, uh, I'm, I like a code review. I'm uh, very... Uh, good at uh, in good uh, code review even for the back end so that's uh, a big plus for me it's easier uh, also uh, I'll try to uh, to have like uh, I'll, I'll have like my passive uh, passive or uh, analysis tools or static analysis tools that I can use directly so it can make the, my work easier. What tools do you use for, for this? No, I have my own uh, my own tools that I built. Ah, your own? Yeah. Okay. It's not uh, uh, special, okay. but I have, uh, for example, I have uh, uh, like uh, like filters or uh, like uh, conditions, uh, let's say, to get uh, something, uh, to uh, like something as, uh, for example, vulnerable or not. The, that uh, database of conditions or sets uh, gets always updated by things I manually find. And uh, it's same, I guess, to uh, one tool, uh, I'm not sure, API or something like that. It's similar to... Uh, Nuclear, yeah, it's, it's very popular. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so how much do you work? Because from, from this podcast, uh, we know that you usually hunt for a few days. Then when you find a valid bug, you like to chill out for some time. Mm-hmm. So what do you do in, in this chill out time? So chill out so would be like uh, I'll try them. I'll, uh, my chill out also can be uh, reading books, learning. So uh, I'll try to learn more about uh, like hacking or even other fields like AI or uh, blockchain. So it would be my shield. Uh, also, I uh, just uh, go out. Yeah. But it's not uh, always the case. And... Because sometimes I'll have, for example, uh, business jobs that are, uh, they have a fixed uh, time, li- uh, time, time, or time, time lapse. So, uh, I'll work on that. Okay. And after, after such a chill time, what gives you the motivation to come back to hunting again? No, uh, it's on broke. No, uh, like, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, uh, I just feel about hacking 
or maybe I learned uh, something, uh, I read something new in a book or something, and uh, it encourages me to uh, like go this step and uh, make profits. Okay, okay, I understand. And uh, you you prefer to work from the office than from uh, from from home, uh, as we've talked about previously. What are the other productivity things that you do to just be more effective at your work? Yes, well, and have a clean setup, and have and have uh, multiple monitors. Like each monitor is uh, for a, a task, uh, let's mm -hmm. say. Uh, also, uh, I encourage uh, to have like uh, lights, a lot of light in the room, uh, to have a green area like the plant or something. Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll just uh, have TV open just to, to have uh, a company, let's say. Uh, yeah, in that sense. And, uh, and a lot of when, when is your hand? Yeah. I said that I'm uh, consume a lot of copy. <laughs> That's of course. And when, when is your hunting day? Uh, how, how does this day look like? What time do you get up? What time do you start working? Do you have any other habits that you like to do? So, uh, before, like when I, I wasn't like, I didn't have the company. It was like a random, uh, I can, I can, for example, stay for 14 hours. I can, uh, like stay up uh, all night and uh, sleep all day. But now since I have this, uh, like I have working hours, let's say, I'll try to, uh, for example, wake up at uh, seven or six and uh, work uh, for eight or nine hours. Okay. And do you, do you like to take break? Do you, do you have some structured approach to taking breaks in, in the middle of the day or do you just go with the gut feeling? Uh, yeah, I have, uh, I actually uh, would uh, have a lot of breaks. Like uh, if I feel I finished the desk, I feel uh, like something, uh, like I made progress. I just take uh, a break, like 15 to 15 minutes break. Uh, like by reach something bigger and take 30 minutes. It's like motivation thing to get uh, done to have a break. Okay. Okay. I understand. Let's now switch gears a little bit. There is a topic, uh, so hot that we can't just not talk about it. Of course it's, it's the AI, uh, what usages of AI did you try? Uh, how, how did you try to make AI help you at your job? So as uh, I said, uh, I guess uh, most of my work is manual, but uh, of course, if I get, uh, if I can get the free uh, second hand, I would use it. So AI, I usually, uh, especially ChatGPT, I usually uh, I use it for like specific search in certain databases, for example, uh, I refer Google as a database. So if I think, uh, if ChatGPT can analyze, analyze the, for example, the code and decide what things to search for to get uh, this, for example, exploitable. For example, if I find in one JavaScript find, uh, I'm not sure. I don't have an example now, but it would make a very specific search in uh, archive.org, Google, uh, all the databases, and get me the response without really like analyzing the code and finding that interesting line of tape. So that's uh, at the moment uh, the only thing that uh, I use to pay for. In the future, I guess uh, it's possible to do make with ChatGPT, at least for me, not complex ones, 
because uh, I had like, I made uh, an experience and uh, with a friend and uh, we, they actually talked about it uh, in, in an interview. And yes, it was in TV. So uh, I tested ChatGPT to find the uh, bag uh, that uh, I found. So it wasn't uh, able to find it. And even though that uh, ChatGPT maybe was trained based on my bag article, even though uh, that uh, that's the case, it wasn't, be, uh, it wasn't able to find it. So uh, I guess uh, it won't right now. I, I, won't be like helpful to get complex bags farms, but uh, to get uh, multiple uh, weaknesses that could uh, that would need the human being to analyze and uh, maybe change to get a big impact. Do you think in the future AI will be able to take? a job of pen testers or, or bug bounty hunters? Uh, I think yeah, a bit, uh, uh, I'd say 60% of bug bounty can be done by uh, uh, by an AI. Like the 60% work of current uh, bug bounty hunters can be done. That's why I encourage bug bounty hunters to always find a special talent or something very specific to you and uh, learn more, uh, more about it, learn uh, uh, all the complexity behind it because uh, that I won't be uh, an easy task for an AI, for yeah. any AI. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great tip, I think, for uh, f for anyone who now wants to learn something, the, the thought process should involve, can AI replace me doing this in, in some time in the future or is this a unique skill which at least for for um upcoming years who ai won't be able to do and and looking at, at security ai may find simple bugs but i don't see uh in in upcoming years that it will be able to understand the complex multi-component infrastructure all the microservices different contexts it's just too too complex so so i think if uh if we can find bugs like this then then we are secure yeah like uh, how about how go in go ahead okay so it's uh, like i guess uh, even currently, like uh, since ChatGPT, for example, is not operating by itself. So uh, it, the API is available, I guess. So you can, the uh, bug bounty hunters can do, uh, like, uh, I guess they can uh, do uh, some jobs with uh, ChatGPT or find bugs in ChatGPT at least. Uh, it's only about the way you do it, since it, uh, it doesn't have an internet access, so you have to give clues, you have to, uh, of course, uh, describe the behavior of the application. Uh, also, uh, yeah, uh, do you, uh, do you encourage like uh, people or hunters to use uh, AI? Um. I, I try to use AI in, in my uh, in my job, but so far, most of the uses when when I see it, see it's useful, is more in the content creation side than actually when hacking. Uh, when hacking, so far the the good um, the good use of of uh, ChatGPT is to generate me a template. Um, this is maybe more for for CTFs when you need I don't know. A Python script to send a payload over WebSockets. Uh, with Google, it will take you at least a few minutes to find out the hello world, modify it, and so on. And for things like that, Chat Chat GPT is awesome because it it really generates something that can be a base of of your exploit. So this is for me so far. It's the the only real good use of uh, of AI in in my security work. Yeah, nice. It's, uh, I guess it's a good way to use it. 
Yeah. Yeah, I also saw it's integrated now in SAMGREP uh, for verifying if uh, SAMGREP is a source code scanner and they integrated it to verify if the finding is a false positive or not. Mm -hmm. So it takes the alert from SAMGREP and takes the context of the code and says if it's good or not. I haven't tested it, but I think it makes sense and it, it's a very, very good context uh, for, for AI. So let's, let's see how it works. Yeah. Another sort of new, although now with the, with the AI hype a bit, um, a bit forgotten trend is the web free and blockchain. Did you do any hacking of, uh, of web free apps? Uh, but to be honest, I'm still studying the, the technology. I know it's the, like a new technology is very old, but I didn't have the time to like switch from web two to web three hacking. Uh, it's the same concept and maybe it would be, if it won't, uh, it would work uh, this for me, because uh, I like code review and it would be uh, a good way to uh, analyze smart contracts and everything. But uh, yeah, uh, however, I have the, like some bad uh, reviews from other actors that uh, tested Web3 applications. Uh, sometimes they get, they won't uh, get paid as much they promise like as a program promise, sometimes they get paid after uh, six months or a year. And uh, for me, it's a critical thing, like the timing of the payout. But uh, I guess uh, I'll try it, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed over the course of this podcast that for you, the the quick feedback loop of getting a payout is, is very important. Uh, and I saw in some of the bugs I covered on my channel with web free, the bounty was paid out over a year. So it was, it was in the, in the write up, it was written that the bounty is 1 million that's paid over a year. Uh, so it's like someone with, um, like a reverse credit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, so you get the bounty paid o over a year. I, I don't know how, exactly how it works, but uh, I don't think in the web two bounties, we saw anything like this. Yeah. I think uh, but but uh, apart from this, I, I'm in, I'm in exactly the same boat as you. Like I, I also like to to review the code and understand the code. And I felt like smart contracts should be, should be something for me because of this, because there you always can access the, the code, at least the compiled one. And uh, yet I still didn't use it and I still didn't transfer. I did some learning, but, but not enough to, to find real world bugs with it. Yeah. Uh, also the bugs are uh, very limited. Like, uh, if you, uh, if you want to make it, uh, make a full switch from Web 2 to Web 3 back bounty hunting, you'll have to like uh, find reliable uh, uh, programs. I can think like about, let's say uh, it's like 50 programs could be competing with uh, other hackers, of course, and especially Black Hat hackers, which I guess have more experience at some point. So uh, it won't be easy. Uh, bags would be, uh, would be really, really, but the payout is huge. Yeah. So if you, you can work with these uh, things, you can, you can uh, choose web three. Yeah. So, uh, coming back to, to, to the regular, uh, regular back, backhanding of yours. Last, I think, three years, you were top ha top one on the leaderboard of Facebook, uh, but you tweeted that this year you will not be on the Hall of Fame of Facebook. What is this about? Yeah, so I guess it's uh, about moving on. Like, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, I was happy with Facebook and I stayed uh, working with Facebook because they have the best payouts and they have the best to uh, uh, report to bounty time. Now they don't have uh, that. So, uh, 
Uh, many had grown programs have uh, more uh, bigger bounties than Facebook. Also, uh, it happened to me that uh, I would wait six months for uh, the report to get resolved and uh, get him paid. So that uh, doesn't work for me. Uh, and that's why uh, I switched. So uh, I still didn't like fully, fully uh, start with Hacker Run. But uh, that's the plan for now, to focus on hackathon programs and uh, like uh, finish with uh, Facebook. Okay, okay, that that's a big loss for Facebook right there. Yeah. Um, apart from from waiting for for payouts, what are the things you don't like about Bug Bounty? Yeah, so I guess it with Bad Donkey, uh, sometimes I feel it's not like a, a good relationship with the hunter and uh, the country. Most of the time we'll have a third party in the in the middle, we say, which is the triager, which is uh, deployed by a third party country or by the uh, platform or uh, hacking platform so you can't have direct relationship with the company uh, sometimes the problem would be in the triager then understand it wrongly uh, and uh, it, uh, he or she won't follow it to the company for example uh, sometimes if you have relationship with the company they they know about little details uh, for example from previous reports or from previous work that you did with them. And they understand that the report is critical and need to get triaged immediately. With the triager, like, uh, it, it's not the case. Uh, Facebook actually worked on this, uh, even though uh, the triager is, uh, are uh, employed by Facebook. But, uh, for example, for, uh, for some people, uh, for example, like me, then have a single treasure uh, assigned to me, for example, and uh, I can uh, ask them uh, or contact them about, uh, like, uh, for example, I get uh, the report treasure in one day. Uh, that helps a lot uh, to 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 make the process fast. I guess the with hunters, the main issue is time and understanding of the, the weakness. Uh, of course, I can blame uh, the uh, hacking platforms or the companies, like they need to filter a lot. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's on us to, to uh, try to learn as much as possible and not to try to spam the, uh, these companies and these treasures. So uh, yeah, that's it. Let's assume I am a CEO of, of HackerOne or of big bug bounty platform. And I ask you, Yusuf, we want to make our platform better for hackers. What are the things you would recommend me to change? So with HackerOne, I guess it's, uh, yeah, they did a lot and uh, I won't say they're perfect, but they did, uh, they had a lot of ideas, they applied them. The only issue uh, that I can see is uh, sometimes the misunderstanding of the treasure, for example, uh, uh, the, for example, the Adam vector would be correct. Uh, for example, sometimes they'll uh, fill uh, a report and duplicate to another report, which, which is not related. For example, it won't be the same issue and they'll find like common keywords and the, the common words in both reports and just link them. So I think that's the current problem with HackerOne. Like, uh, I won't say they have one job, and, uh, they have a problem in it, but um, yeah, if they work more on the triaging process, uh, it would be great. Um, also, I don't blame on like, uh, imagine uh, receiving a thousand reports, I'm not sure, per week or per day, and only 10. Uh, are valid, so it's a stressful. 
opinion. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really hard, uh, and I under I also had similar problems. Like a, a few months ago, I had a situation where I would report a bug. It was like a cross site leaks, uh, so a bug really not easy to 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 reproduce, uh, as it was time based. So it was like the worst version, but but I had no change, so I reported it, and the triager couldn't uh, couldn't make it work. And after like a few going back and forth, I'm just okay. It's a low low payout, so I'm just leaving it as it is. And then I had another bug uh, mishandled by the same triageure, so I asked the program if if uh, another report that was already triaged, maybe even fixed. Uh, I asked them that that this triageure is is not really handling the reports well, and and uh, and things like that. And they actually triaged both my other reports immediately um, and it, it like showed me that when you that talking with the program owners of the program maintainers or, or whatever is completely different than talking with the triager so so I definitely hear what you say and on the other hand also from from hacker one point of view like there are so many hackers that uh, that I think it's reasonable business decision for them to just prioritize the relationship with the clients rather than than prioritize uh, hackers which which is bad for us but but I think it's the sad truth uh, I guess yeah, that's true to like uh, they'll, uh, always uh, right is right I guess uh, and um, when I understand that too because they get paid from the client uh, they're not getting a bad from us for the for example, for having uh, us in contact with the program. So I guess uh, for that, they had to maintain a relationship with the clients. And uh, a few of us could have bad reports, but in general, for example, you'll have, uh, like, uh, on average, you'll have a good, uh, a good experience with that program. Like some, some of us, some of us would get, uh, get, uh, take the call, let's yeah. say, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, you said you had an assigned triageure in, in I Facebook know. after how many reports did they assign a triageure to you? Yeah. So it's not assigned, like, uh, it's not like uh, a triageure on the only work for my reports. But uh, at certain point, yeah, I yeah, have, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I like I uh, always have the same treasure uh, for any report or call. Uh, so, for example, uh, yeah, uh, it happened like I guess uh, two years or like for anyone in the diamond league, they have someone that uh, only focusing on that person, uh, and it's good like. Uh, to learn, like to have uh, if, uh, the researchers has uh, a certain style or uh, a certain history to of reporting certain bad, it's better to have only one person that would understand him, understand the things more good. Yeah. Yeah. For for those listeners who don't know that Facebook has has a ranking system based on your performance in last year, and the Diamond League is like the highest tier of of this ranking. This is what uh, what Yusuf mentioned here. Okay. Um, finally, what are you looking forward to achieve in twenty twenty three? Okay. Well, of course. Uh... I need to make uh, more money, similar as last year or more. And, uh, yeah, I guess for this year, I try to uh, I try to switch fields, not uh, the security field, but I'm trying to focus on mobile security. And uh, uh, yeah, at least for example, accounting covers via mobile. I guess nowadays. Uh, it's rare to find what and uh, and try to focus on that, like mobile security in uh, general. And uh, it, uh, it's possible to make the same uh, 
like the uh, amount that I made last year, but all the folks here are more about security, it wouldn't be a, a great uh, achievement for me. Of course, uh, not uh, with awesome. Facebook, but other programs. Awesome. That's awesome. I wish you lots of uh, of luck with uh, with this. Thank you so much right. for, for joining me today. It has been a gold mine of tips for me and, and for uh, for my viewers as well. If they want to follow you, where can they find you? So, yeah, thank you for having me. It was uh, a nice interview, uh, I guess. And uh, if you want to follow me, you can uh, find me on Twitter. Like uh, my handle is uh, SA double uh, uh, zero uh, UDA and uh, yeah, I'm only available in Twitter. Awesome. We'll of course link this in the description. What an amazing interview. Myself, I have lots of takeaways and I hope you do too. In fact, if you do, let me know by leaving a like if you're watching this on YouTube or a review if you're listening it to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or another podcasting app. And if you want to hear another interview with a hunter that likes to go deep into the application, check out this one that's on your screen right now with Johan Carlson, who has incredible success in his first year of Bug Bounty. For now, thank you for listening and goodbye.